Today I wanna to share with you the easiest filing system ever. As with everything else in my home that I embrace minimalism for is to help me maintain it. It's to give me a system where I can manage it, where it's so easy that I will do it. Because if my systems are too complicated, I will set things aside to deal with later and later never comes. Hi, I'm Rachel Jones, author of Nourishing Minimalism. I'm a mom of six and I embraced minimalism after years of struggling with clutter. The relief that I found with living with less is now something I strive to share with others who are overwhelmed and struggling with so much stuff. This video is part of the Clutter Free January series, headed up by The Minimalist Mom, and participating are so many other awesome YouTubers. This week, we're talking about paper, whether it's decluttering, organizing, or maintaining a system, and you can find all of those awesome videos on the playlist. I'll put the link in the video description. Okay, welcome to my filing system. For many years, I absolutely hated filing. You'll probably see that in a lot of my videos. I hated all the things that had to do with managing a home. I thought I needed to file every single bill and receipt and keep track of everything. And the idea of it all was so overwhelming, I didn't do anything. Instead, I would just pile everything up and after the pile got too big, I'd put it in a box and I would shove the box in the basement or in the office or in the garage. I knew that I wouldn't throw anything away, so it was there in case I needed it. The only times I ever had to dig in those boxes was when I needed a car title or something super important, and I would have to dig through all of them in order to find it. It was a massive headache, and it was one of the last things that I addressed when I went to declutter my home. So to avoid boxing all these piles of papers up and shoving them out of the way somewhere, I had to narrow it down to a system for myself. So first off, I gathered all the recent papers and dealt with them. So whether that was bills that needed to be paid or things that needed to be filed that were very recent and I had to figure out for myself what it is that I need to hold on to for a certain period of time and know where they are. And for me, that has meant very few documents that I actually need to hold on to. Then I had to set in place a system where I actually file them. I don't know what it is about filing systems that intimidate me so much. Maybe it's creating the categories, maybe it's opening the box and finding the right file folder. Whatever it is, I never did it. So I had to figure out what kind of system I would follow through with. And it happens to be drawers. For whatever reason, drawers seem so much easier for me. And if I have something I need to file, I could open the drawer, slide the paper in, close the drawer, and be done with it. So I found this awesome little file cabinet at Ikea quite a few years ago. And I'm gonna walk you through exactly what I have learned that I should keep for our household. So this filing cabinet has six drawers and I keep all important papers, birth certificates, car titles, those type of things where they're easy to access. If I need any of these papers, I know exactly where they are and it's very easy to get to. Then I have a drawer for inbox stuff. These are all the things that we get in the mail, a bill that needs to be paid or insurance things that I'm waiting on. If it's something that I need to keep for a period of time, it will go in this drawer. If my husband is doing bills and he needs a certain bill, he knows exactly where to look to find it. This also means that all the incoming papers have a place to go and they don't have to sit on the counter or the table until they're dealt with. They're just going to be right here. In another drawer, I have all of our extra checks, stamps, envelopes, those type of things. And then I have a drawer for current school stuff. So this would be IEP papers, any agreements if I have physical copies of them, information to sign on to school websites. Then we have a drawer for personal tax stuff because it comes in over a period of time and we have a place that it belongs so we can collect it there and know exactly where our tax documents are. Then I have a drawer for business documents. So when I get something in the mail, 
I can open it up, read it, and slide it right into the drawer. The nice thing about having this drawer system is that everything is chronological. The bottom is January of the year, and then the top will be December of the year, and I can grab all of those papers out at the end of the year, put it in a manila envelope, write the date on there, and if I need to reference that for any reason, I know exactly which manila envelope to grab and look through. I store all of our manila envelopes together in a bin with all of our tax documents. So everything is very easy to access in case we need it. We've eliminated as much paper clutter from our house as possible. So we do electronic bank statements and bills and all of that so we don't have to maintain a huge paper trail, which means that this can be it for the filing system and there's nothing more that I have to deal with. We don't hang on to a lot. We don't keep a lot of statements. A statement is there to make you aware of something and once you have read it and been made aware of it, it's not usually something you need to hold on to. Now my disclaimer is that I am not an accountant and I have very little legal knowledge. So if it's something that you have a question about, ask your accountant if you need it and do your own research for that. I have found over the years that I have needed very few things. The only thing I can think of is when applying for a library card or something of that nature where I needed a bill with my name and address on it to prove that I live in this home. We got rid of as much as possible and kept only the bare minimum and then assigned a place for it to belong. When I talk about paper and filing things, people often ask, well, what do you do about the children's drawings and school projects? So for artwork, we have three school-aged kids at home right now, each have a hinged frame and they get to decide what is displayed there. This frame holds, I think, 30 pieces of paper. So when it's full and it won't hold anymore, then we take them out and we sort through them. And the ones that the child decides to let go of, we lay them on the floor, have the child sit next to them, take a picture, and then we can recycle those pictures and just keep the ones that they chose to keep in the hinged frame. This eliminates having to hang things on the fridge or everything getting rumpled and stained because it's moved from counter to counter. And they really enjoy having their artwork in a very official looking display. Everything else I have told them up front that we will keep things for a week or two and then we will recycle or throw them away. That way they know ahead of time that this is not something that we are going to keep forever. It's also helpful to change the way we respond when our child brings us a piece of artwork that they made for us. Because it's so easy to be dismissive and distracted and say, oh yeah, that's nice, honey. Okay, can you go stick it on the fridge for me? When our kids give us artwork like that, they really want the connection with us. So if we skip that, then of course we're gonna feel guilty if we decide to clean off our fridge and throw all the artwork away because we know that we didn't really take time to appreciate the effort that our child put into this. So instead, if we just kind of slow down, put down our phone, focus in on our child, and look them in the eye and say, wow, thank you so much for thinking of me. Can you tell me about this picture? And you have this little conversation with them. You have that connection. You can hug them, express love. Then you can display it for a period of time and then also let it go without feeling bad about it because the important part of that was the exchange that initially happened where you connected with each other. Okay, that's it for me today. Be sure to check out the playlist. I put it in the video description below. And in the comments, I'd love if you tell me an easy way that you have found to manage your paper filing.